In today's video, I'm gonna be going through two killer moves I see day in, day out, made in players downswing movement and how you can get out of those movements for better golf shots. Stay tuned for more info. Welcome back to the True Golf Academy. You've joined me, John Watts, today at Branston Golf and Country Club. Today's video, as I mentioned, is part of a series I'm filming calling Killer Moves. So today I'm gonna to be focusing on the downswing and I'm gonna go through two really destructive moves I see players make on the driving range or out in the golf course day in, day out that really are very disruptive. Now I have done uh, part one of this series actually on the backswing, so I will put the link up here. It's worth checking that out also on two killer moves I see being made in the backswing, but today's video is gonna focus on the downswing. Now, I'm gonna be using and demonstrating with a driver here, but this would be relevant with any golf club. So the tips I'm giving you would be the same, whether we're talking about a hybrid club or an iron club or even a wedge. It's the same movement on a full swing for me. We're not talking about something different. So the two moves I'm gonna go through, the destructive moves that I see made in the player's downswing, one would be a poor sequence where they are being led with their upper body at the start of the downswing. So we tend to see a swing that comes down much more on the outside over here, cutting across the golf ball. Now, normally for a right-handed golfer, they're gonna see that ball curving off to the right of the target, the opposite for a left-handed golfer. They could hit a straight pull, but quite often, especially with these long clubs, it turns more into a slice and they tend to miss the fairway more to the right of the target. And it's really that they're trying to put the speed into it at the start of the downswing and we see it being led with the upper body. And the second killer move I see with players is, I'm gonna to refer to it as hanging back. So when the player is too much on their trail foot into impact and really struggling, and often these two moves are actually linked. So players who quite often do make this movement out to win here, they know they're actually hitting down on the golf ball too much, so their reaction is to try and back up and we see the head going in the opposite direction and their pressure going towards their trail foot. So quite often these two parts are linked but I'm gonna go through them a little bit separately. Um, what I would encourage you to do is know your game. You know, this is a generic video about downswing. I'm covering two key parts that I see golfers struggle with. Do I know if they're relevant for you? No, you would have to look at your ball flight. You'd have to look ideally at your swing on video or know what your fault is to know whether this is relevant to you. But if these are, I'm gonna give you some ideas on how you can actually start your downswing better and how you can start to ensure that you get your weight going forwards towards the target, making sure that pressure is moving towards that lead leg. So let me tee one up here and let's start talking about the downswing movement this part here, that transition movement from the top of the backswing to the start of the downswing that so many golfers struggle with. So the correct sequence of events, if I get to the top of the backswing, and you'd never think of it this way, but if I get to this movement here, we want to start from ground up. So it would be my left knee, then it would be my left hip, then it would be my abdominals, then it would be my chest, shoulder, elbow, hand, wrist, club. We can't ever think of it that way, but it's the same, you know, if I asked you to throw the ball a long way or skim a stone, you wouldn't be led with upper body first. You'd actually start to use the legs, the ground upwards. And that's what we're really trying to do. So what I'd encourage you to do is maybe go back to some throwing exercises, some skimming stone exercises, starting to utilize ground up, starting to get that feeling. Now. There's a couple of ways of thinking about this and the easiest for me on the golf course or I've found for my pupils is rather than asking them to start with their lower body, which is absolutely the right movement, I try and get them to feel like they're delaying their upper body. So actually if I can get the player on the course to feel like they delay their upper body, that they keep their back facing the target a little longer, it stops this trail shoulder going out towards the golf ball and because they're delaying their upper body just slightly, their lower body's starting to actually sequence better. So the correct movement on the downswing is definitely lower body first, but 
in my opinion, rather than asking a player to focus on that, actually asking them to perhaps delay their upper body, feel a bit more patient in the downswing, almost like their lead arm works down across their chest, gets them into a better position where they can do the second part as well and start to get their pressure forwards, not hanging back at all. So the feeling for me would be at the top of the, the backswing that I keep my back facing the target and allow my lead arm to run down my chest. That's very different, you'll see, to this style of move here where my trail shoulder is going out towards the golf ball and the club's being thrown out to win. So we want to really get that feeling back facing the target, and my lead arm dropping down my chest. Okay, and that's going to help me delay my upper body lunging forwards and mean that I can start to utilize my lower body better. In terms of exercises, um, what I'd get you to do is, is do some movements where you allow that lead arm to run down the chest, that back to face the target, and then really turn through. So I call this exercise stop, drop. So you're dropping your arms. That's very different to being pulled down. I'm dropping my arms and I turn through. So it is a stop, drop and turn. So we can start to get that feeling of the sequence we're looking for. So that stop, drop, turn. And that could be a really good movement for you if you are someone who's struggling with your sequence and getting too quick with your upper body. The key word perhaps is patience, not trying to hit it from the top of the golf swing and actually delaying that upper body a little bit more to give the lower body its chance. So we're not rushing that downswing with the upper body movement. And that's a really simple way for you to take that to the golf course. There's a, a lot of different drills you can do and I will put a couple of links just up here and videos I've filmed about the sequence of the downswing and starting with the lower body first and, and they're very relevant. And if you are a style of player where actually focusing on using your lower body rather than delaying your body works, fine, use it, go for it. As long as we get that correct sequence, as long as we're not getting that club being moved out to in. So the second part, the second killer move is that hanging back movement that I talked about where I see players too much onto their back foot. Again, that sequence of events I just talked about will really help. So that stop, drop, where I feel like my pressure as I drop my arms is more 50-50, I'm sort of recentering my hips. In reality, there will be more momentum going towards my lead side, and actually I will have more pressure onto this front foot. But what I'm looking for you to do is drop the arms and then turn through. So we're really starting to use that lower body better. If you are a player where you don't struggle with the out to in part, but you're hanging back, you're not really using your legs well enough, not really getting through the ball well enough. The focus for you would just be as something as simple as trying to get that trail knee towards that lead knee. So if you can start to get this movement, the trail foot, the trail knee moving towards the left or my lead side, my pressure is moving towards my front foot and that allows my body now to start to rotate. So the movement is this, before we can start to rotate our body. And that's gonna be a really good feeling for you is that trail foot, trail knee, going towards the lead side and allowing my lead side to get out the way. We could even, if we were talking about using the ground better, do a movement where we feel like we push down into the ground and push off the ground. So we're starting to create some force where we're pushing down into the ground to use our legs better on the way through rather than this movement where my pressure is going backwards away from the target. We want to make sure that at the start of the downswing we're applying some force into that lead side. As I said these are two real killer moves and often I see them linked. Players coming out to win at the start of the downswing and then hanging back as a reaction. It may be that you only suffer with one of those, and that's where I'd encourage you to get it on video and see what you're doing. You know, there's, there's lots of cheap and free apps where you can video yourself, draw lines over, you know, circles on your head, lines there, to see what is relevant to you. Are you a player where you're going up on one line, down on another, out of sequence? Are you a player where you're hanging back? These are two huge killer moves I see in the downswing. So I'm gonna try and put them together. 
I'm going to go for that exercise of stop, drop my arms, my back's facing the target, turn through. So when I turn through, I'm really getting that lead foot, lead knee, sorry, my trail foot, trail knee moving towards my lead side. I would encourage you to have those practice movements back here behind the ball. And walk in and you're trying to really put it together on in the golf swing, but as simple as we can, my swing thought is going to be just delaying my upper body, allowing my arms to drop and completing that finish position, that follow through. So good contact, good strike, good ball flight. Felt like I was nice and patient in the start of the downswing and then started to shift my pressure towards my lead side into that full finish position. Let me go ahead and hit one last one. Let me give that one more go for you. Well, I will take that all day long. Nice ball flight just onto the front edge of the green there on the par four, but really felt very patient in my downswing. My speed and power felt near impact. So I actually got those two areas to work nicely together. If you are someone where you're struggling in your downswing, I know that sequence of events is really gonna help you. If it does, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Do post some comments below. It's great to hear from you. Any feedback, any videos you'd like to see. Thanks guys, we'll see you soon.